Sure, not a problem. Um, right. I guess uh, I guess I'll start it off, uh, Coach. I wanted to talk on uh, Tyler Harrell has drawn a lot of praise uh, in the offseason by Sat and some of his peers. Just talk about what you've seen from him um, at the start of preseason camp. Yeah, Tyler's a young guy that's been in the program. It's his time to shine, as they say. So he obviously can run really fast straight ahead. we we'll are develop him as a, as a route runner. He can definitely take the top off with that kind of speed. You know, 4-2 type speed is, is rare. So uh, he's developing his skill set, becoming a much better catcher of the ball, which that, that's what he's got to do. He can't just run fast. He's got to be able to run routes and catch the ball. I know that that's uh, taken for granted, but – it was one of those things that, that he's a guy who can definitely become that person, and we're looking forward to. He has shown lots of signs of being that guy, and we're looking, you know, like I said, looking forward to him getting in some live reps because we have very little experience with live reps. So I think he'll be a guy that will be able to at least, you know, give us some some reps somewhere. Hey, Gunner Cameron with the Courier Journal. What, what did you learn about your receiving core from, from Saturday's scrimmage? Well, we, we played a lot of guys evenly, uh, Cameron, which was which was good because, as I mentioned, we've got some very talented guys, but they haven't had any live experience, meaning game experience. We, we've recruited those guys. We loved them on tape. We see what we saw in the offseason. So now it's time to see what they can do in, in game-type reps. And the only way you can get that experience is to play. Scrimmage is as close as we can get without NFL preseason games. So with the scrimmage, we saw some very encouraging things from really all our guys that have been uh, that we're going to count on, let's say, uh, you know, but you also see that that rookie. I'm going to use that rookie term for uh, whether it's a freshman, sophomore, whatever, that, that those rookie mistakes mean just from inexperience. And they got to go through the growing pains to get there. And hopefully we can limit those, Cameron. But they're, they're going to show, unfortunately, it's going to be one of those that your wife and everybody in the stands going to be say, just catch the ball, you know, and it's going to be a technical thing that caused them to uh, either have a drop or have an MA where they're thinking and processing instead of playing. And a veteran, he just, he just knows what to do. You know, you know, it's kind of like grandma. She knows how to make biscuits. Well, your wife's got to learn from her and grandma ain't always sharing that recipe yet. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those things that your veteran guys, we've got a few of them, Braden Smith, He's a guy who does have game snaps. It's more, you know, season. And there's a few more guys behind him that have a little bit of seasoning, but I wouldn't say that are prime time ready to go. That's why we got to get them ready to go. Dr. Hayes, Jody Dimling with Cardinal Authority. You have you have a lot of guys that it seems like you could play in different positions, guys that are versatile. I mean, even Jordan was saying how he can play inside or outside. Um, with with having a group that is inexperienced, is that a good thing that you can move guys around and play them in different spots? Yeah, it's a great question, Jody. Uh, we call it position flexibility. Obviously, if you if you own a Swiss Army knife, you know what I'm talking about. It has a lot of tools in there that all of a sudden can do different things. And we want guys to be able to do different things, not just be a you know a one trick pony right there. We want to be able to play inside and outside, but we're going to play to their strengths too. Obviously, with uh, lack of experience, we would like for guys who have played before to be able to put in a game when maybe somebody gets shook a little bit to get them in the game, to get the other guy settled down and say it's okay. Now, he may not be your best point guard, but he may be, be your best shooting guard. So let's shift him over there until the other guy kind of gets his feet wet and then bring him back over. I, I like to term our wide receiver core kind of like building a basketball team. You got a point guard, you got a shooting guard, you got a power forward. You know, you, you got a center. You want different guys to be good at different things, but also you want to be able to dribble, shoot, play defense, uh, defend the basket, all the things that you want a great basketball player too. You know, we, we like to spread the field. I, I love to call it basketball on grass, old Tark back in the day, UNLV. We want to run the floor, man. We want to stretch the field. We want to do, you know, play up tempo. You know, we've had a lot of success scoring points and being successful here. We're going to do it with tight ends, with running backs, with receivers. So, uh, hey, we'll take them all. Hey, Coach Michael McCann at Cardinal Authority. Question regarding a couple of two different newcomers. One, a veteran guy in Shy Wirtz. How's his transition to wide receiver going? And then true freshman Amari Huggins-Bruce. How are those two coming along so far in camp? Uh, both are really coming really well. Uh, Shy, you know, we don't talk about certain injuries, but Shy is coming off 
uh, an injury, and he is really starting to get the feel for playing that position. Unfortunately, when he got here, uh, you know, he had that injury, which kind of slowed him down a little bit. You know, he's a guy, we talk about Swiss Army now, if he can play, he can play quarterback, he can play running back, he can play slot receiver, he can play outside. So he's now learned our offense, and we're trying to see where he fits. So he's had a good camp thus far, and he's got some maturity. He's also got those game experiences that we played. Although it be at another position, it doesn't matter. He doesn't get shook when things get kind of iffy or you have a bad play. He can shake it off and come back to the next one. You know, Amari is a guy who's exhibited a lot of speed and quickness. He's a freshman. He's a guy that, uh, you know, he's kind of like a 2-2 size as far as his height and his weight. And actually, he's heavier than 2-2. But, you know, he, he's more of that frame guy who, who can play in the slot and play at the Z like 2 twos doing at, uh, at the Rams. Uh, I don't want to compare him to him. I don't mean that in a lot of ways, but his size and stuff, and he does have really legit speed. So he's working through trying to find his niche in the offense. And then we're also working to find places that where do we play these different guys? You know, you, you got Braden, you got, you got Jordan, you got uh, all these other people, you got Tyler, uh, you know, you got some people that can make some plays. Justin Marshall's having a really good camp, a big guy. So I, I'd like to develop eight guys, to be honest with you, if you want to know what I would like to do. I'd like to have eight. That way, we, when we go full wide, we've got two deep. Uh, JJ's had a great camp. You know, he's a veteran that a lot of people don't talk about because he's overcome some injuries. He's also just earned his degree. He's a smart guy who can get guys lined up. So, you know, you leave that guy undefended, sometimes, you know, he'll make that three-pointer on you and win the game, stick the dagger in your heart. I think that happened in Chicago one time with Jordan who passed it to another guy who made the shot. Is that right there, Cameron? You remember that one? Okay. All right. So everybody has their role. You find your role, get in your role, and be good at your role. And then you can grow that role. Don't try to be something you're not. And we're not trying to force that, but we're trying to force guys to understand that you have to be, uh, have some position flexibility. Don't just memorize this position. You know, learn it by concept. And we're learning by trial and error right now. We're throwing some guys in the fire and seeing where it goes. We also have Jalen Carter, who transferred who had a tremendous day to day. Uh, he's a guy that, that came, you know, came in and he's done well. So we're look, we, he's showing flashes. So we got guys, you know, we want to see. Just fans hadn't seen him yet, and hey, we're like fans. We hadn't seen him yet either. We want to see him in a game. Gunner, you, you mentioned you wanted to get to eight, about eight. Where, where do you feel like you're at with your receivers now in terms of guys you you think you could play on the field, and and do you think this will be a committee thing for much of the season? I guess the best way to answer that, Cameron, yes. I think it'll be committee early until guys decide, hey, who's going to be that guy? Who's going to be the horse that jumps out there and takes the reins and say, hey, I'm the one, okay? And then who's the next one? And then then they go neck and neck, and you got your good race, and guys start challenging each other for that deal. But uh, I would say early on, especially first three games, that it, it will be by committee for sure, keeping, keeping some guys fresh, uh, using their skill sets, especially young guys or guys maybe you haven't seen as much to see what they can do. And then we'll fi figure out where they fit from there. Uh, but that would be the best way probably to answer your question. Hey, Gunnar, it's Pat Jaggers, ESPN Louisville. Uh, obviously, your guys compete against the secondary every day in practice. But, you know, is there a, a couple of guys that have just really stood out to you besides maybe Keytrail Clark that uh, have really been giving some of your guys a fit? I'll be honest with you, the, the two deep on that side have, run, have done a tremendous job. The safeties are brutal to go against because they play this uh, type of coverage that you just sit there and bang you. They're big guys, so you got to get them off their spot. So it's a different type of uh, man coverage and different type of cover. B. Brown and that secondary, G, Coach G, have done a tremendous job that way. And then, as you said, Clark and, and some other guys, but some of the young guys are doing real well, too. I think they're too deep right now and then trying to fit – some guys in that nickel who's going to be the extra guy there. Uh, but same names you mentioned are the guys that stand out because they're, they're ahead of the pack and they've kind of set themselves ahead. But uh, I'm, I'm encouraged by, you know, because you should win some and lose some. If you don't lose some, you kind of get really worried that you're going to have to score a bunch. And Coach Brown the defensive staff have done a tremendous job of recruiting, first of all. they got a great scheme. It's hard to go against. So I think kids are getting comfortable playing in that, that system now. 
Got to hey, it's Jody again. Uh, obviously, Marshawn's a tight end. He's going to stay there. He helps you guys so much in the offense and that. But Scott has mentioned on multiple occasions in this preseason that we could, we will see him some perhaps at wide receiver. He's the ultimate Swiss Army knife, and, and, and is he not? And, and as the wide receiver coach, uh, do you try to kind of steal him a little bit from uh, from from Coach Holt a little? Well, we we share. We'll say it that way. Uh, he's a big body guy that's got tremendous quickness, great hands, and is a super route runner. So he becomes what we term in NFL a, a nightmare to match up to. So are you going nickel? If they go nickel and have a small guy covering him. That's a mismatch. If you go big guy, he's got the quickness and things now to run by him and to get vertical, and he's got very deceptive speed. That Those are the type guys, as you see, uh, in these spread-type offenses that that have given people problems. You know, I know that guy from Florida is a, a you know first-round freak, but those are the matchups that you kind of look for when you can get it. And he's doing more things in camp, and we're relying on him more uh, than ever. One, he's got great game experience. You know, he's been there and done that. He's shown against great competition. So he's a weapon for us, and he's also a weapon that's played, and he's got a lot of responsibility. He's looked up to with the team, and he's a leader. As, as a follow-up to what you said earlier, as as you've been doing this for a long time, have you ever had a group where you don't know what freak is – you know, you've got a group of these guys, but you don't know who's going to step up. Have you – have you had years like this when it's just kind of early on by committee? Uh, yeah. You know, as long as I've been going, Jody, you know, Moby Dick was a minute when I got started. So, uh, you know, you've seen a little bit. I've had several. There was a case when I was in North Carolina early that we signed four freshmen and, and three out of the four went to the NFL. But they started, uh, you know, just young. And this, this is kind of that way. And I know these guys aren't freshmen, but they're they're COVID freshmen or they're whatever. So you don't have a lot of game experience with it. So, yeah, I've had some experience, which is nice. So I can reflect on and kind of give these guys and show these guys, hey, you, you need to be part of a unit. We are a true core, you know, uh, wide receivers that they're counting on each other that, hey, uh, you know, when I get I get a nick or I get tired or whatever happens, I know the next man up has got my back. So in developing eight and playing eight keeps them interested. You know, that, that keeps them in a the room, keeps them practicing. Whereas the last couple of years, we've had a couple of real dudes that, uh, I mean, you know, it ain't real hard to figure out the ball is probably going to, to Dez and Tutu. Uh, and then that's where some of the other guys get some love late and some sneaky love, which is kind of nice in a game. But now I'm not sure people are going to know who to, who to focus on. So guys are going to get some touches and some opportunities. And, and then they got to do something with it. You know, hey, Gunnar Cameron, again, you mentioned Justin Marshall, and I think we mentioned the same thing last year in fall camp about he really looks the part and he, he, he he's practicing well in camp. What What's the next step you think for him to take take what he's doing in fall camp now and make it uh, into consistent production on the field? Yeah, great question, Cameron. I think it's his time. Like he had a guy in front of him that was a very productive player and been playing since a freshman here with with Dez and. When you roll guys, sometimes the opportunities don't quite get there. Maybe the ball, he's in the game, but the ball is going to somebody else. And when you did throw it to him, you saw several years that uh, he did catch it and do some really good things with it. I think he's learned, he's matured, and he's ready for his time. And he's shown leadership, and, and I think it's it's going to be a great year for him. I would be shocked if it wasn't. Uh, you'll see 18 on the field. And uh, like you said, he definitely looks the part when you draw him up, and he's playing the part. So I think it's just opportunities. He just hasn't had as many as we'd, we'd like, but he'll get them this year. So be careful what you ask for there, Cameron. You may get it. Anything else, guys? No. All right. Let's go. Thanks, All right, Jody. Jody. You're looking good, man. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> See y'all.